The mysteries of nature are as infinite as they are fascinating. Thousands of books have been written in an effort to explain these mysteries. And the man who can best explain them is, of course, our friend, Mr. John Kieran. Right now, Mr. Kieran is in his library with Paul Milford, his next door neighbor. Let's listen. John, it seems we've been all over the face of the earth on your kaleidoscope. Where could you possibly take us now where we could find things a little bit different? Well, Paul, uh, how would you like a trip down to the bottom of the sea without even getting your feet wet? Well, that sounds very interesting. And while we're there, would we get a look at Davy Jones' locker? No, and I don't think we'd see Mother Carey's kitchen either, but I can show you a lot of queer animals and uh, a seahorse that meets his Waterloo. Oh, I'd love to see a seahorse and Waterloo at the same time. You know, Paul, life at the bottom of the sea is as fantastic as the tale by Edgar Allan Poe. Some of these creatures down there never even see the light of the sun. Suppose I show you some of the amazing lives these creatures live. There are harbors all over the world to reap the harvest of the sea. But all is not fish that comes to their nets. For instance, the first things they see may be porpoises that look like fish, swim like there just the way we do. And they have to come to the surface to breathe it. Well, the surface, but uh, we can see something much more interesting if we go fishing with a camera down under. Now, here we have a man making ready to perform that exploit. Now, you notice that his head is being screwed on tight. He really does need that down under the water. And here we attach the airline, which is also important if the man is to breathe. In fact, this is a two-man job. You'll see that uh, we'll give him a helper down under the water there. And uh, please remember that uh, the light down under the surface of the water is not very good, and consequently you have to look sharp to uh, get uh, the most out of the pictures. And here the two men go down. And the leader is looking for a good location for the camera. You see the bubbles of his uh, escape valve going up. Uh, that's where he breathes out. And that's one way of keeping track of where your man is down under the water. He's directly beneath the bubbles. It's rather hard walking down there. There's uh, plenty of plant life growing on the floor of the sea, and the rocks are pretty slimy. Man has to feel his way around with his leaden shoes. But finally, he finds a good location. Then we send the tripod down for him. And then the camera. You've heard of fountain pens that write underwater. Well, this is a camera that uh, takes pictures underwater, which is even a harder trick to perform. Now, when he has set up his camera, he can spread some bait around in order to draw the fish within range of the lens. Just the way you chum when you go fishing. And when he spreads the bait, he draws around a horde of fish of many sizes and species, all of them hungry. Now this looks something like a grove of trees around a cliff, but as a matter of fact, it's uh, marine life down there, plant and animal life. Things are sometimes not what they seem down under the water. Now here is uh, something that looks like a plant, but uh, really it's, it's an animal. And its name is Serpula contortuplica. Well, that's all in fun, that's its Latin name. You can call it a worm. And that's its breathing apparatus that you see there breathes that way and also draws in food. I think it's a spectacular way of uh, breathing myself. Well, our man has uh, exhausted the possibilities of that location, so he's taking the camera and walking along to see what he can catch that way. Well, the first thing he catches is a seahorse. We've magnified it here, but it's uh, 
It's a very interesting uh, fish and a true fish with a head like a horse, and that's how it gets its name. Now there's a crab down there with some camouflage on top of it, a plant that it has put on top of its shell to trap its prey, and it has caught the seahorse. Crab does that deliberately. That's one of our men pushing his way through the water there to get a better view. There are very curious things down on the floor of the sea. Giant mussels, for instance. Now, to show you how large this particular mussel is, that if you look at the top, you will see a crab. That's a hermit crab. No, it's not a hermit crab. It's just a small, uh, ordinary crab, and it's about a half inch long. And that will give you an idea of the size of that mussel. Here's an odd-looking creature. It's a fish, although it looks like a bull with horns there. Oh, it has many names, but to the scientist, it's one of the uh, blenoid group. And what do you make of this? Looks like a shell of some kind. Well, it isn't a shell, it's an animal, and its name is Chonrosia reniformis. There I go with the Latin again, just for the fun of it. As a matter of fact, it's a sponge, and a sponge is an animal. But you never saw a sponge with legs, and there seem to be legs to this thing. Well, the legs belong to a hermit crab that has backed into that sponge. You see, hermit crabs don't have hard shells like ordinary crabs, so they back into shells for the most part. In this case, this crab has backed into a sponge to protect itself. It wears it as a house, a portable house. Here's a funny-looking animal. That's a cuttlefish. It has uh, several notable qualities. One thing, it can uh, throw out a smoke screen of sepia, which, by the way, is uh, where we get the color from. Notice the uh, fins uh, that are like lace curtains along its side. And it also can change color. Incidentally, it's not a true fish, it's a mollusk but it does look like a fish. But now just watch how it can uh, change color. Now it's getting stripes like a zebra. The leopard can't change its spots and the zebra can't change its stripes, but this cuttlefish is a, a little trickier than that. It can change its stripes. You watch them fade out. Not a very handsome animal. Now there's another uh, rather unhandsome animal. That's a squid. Quite unattractive, I'd say. And by the way, it, it doesn't go backward all the time. That's just the drift of the water past the camera lens. And here's another member of the same uh, rather uh, terrifying family. This is an octopus. The cuttlefish, the squid, and the octopus all belong to the mollusk family. And they're all disagreeable looking. Most of them are small, but some of them do grow large, and I know I'd hate to meet them when I was in swimming. Uh, a spiny lobster. The French call this langouste and uh, sell it for fancy prices. It's a close-up of its uh, face. Well, here we have the harvest of the sea. Fish of countless kinds, oysters and scallops, clams, crab, eels, lobsters, shrimp, food for mankind. 
taken from the depths and shallows of the seven seas. But over and over again, the fishermen put out to sea, hoping for fair weather and a good catch. 